you know, we're not only telling our young people that they've got to borrow money to go to college and put themselves in debt for half of their life, but we're also leaving them this enormous problem, which is an avoidable problem. Our legal case, uh, which is now in the district court of, in uh, Oregon, um, which is one level below the Supreme Court, is uh, against the federal government uh, for not doing its job of protecting the rights of uh, young people. Um, and, uh, you know, if we're going to uh, stabilize climate within a century time scale, we have to actually phase out fossil fuel emissions quite rapidly. Uh, it may not be known by most people, but the scenarios that IPCC talks about uh, for even staying within a two degree limit assume an enormous amount of negative emissions. In other words, they're assuming that young people in the second half of this century are going to capture our emissions and and then store it underground. To the tune of a hundred, uh, six hundred trillion dollars. Now, that's that's an enormous amount of money, uh, and it's just not likely to happen. The, the ways that they imagine doing it, so-called BECs, bios, biospheric energy and carbon capture and storage, requires use of a substantial fraction of agricultural land to grow these biofuels. And then assuming that we're going to do that instead of growing food there and, and then uh, capturing the CO2 by burning the biofuels in power plants. It's uh, an implausible scenario. We have to make clear that uh, we're handing young people a situation that will be out of their control. Traditionally, this has been cast as uh, the environmental impacts they're going to be living with, but you're talking about economic, their financial burden as well. Yeah, that's right. And I, I was impressed by my oldest grandchild, Sophie, who, who uh, you know, the lawyers are asking her to say, well, what thing, how is this impacting you, and you know, what do you see in your daily life? And she said, well, it's, it's the economic implications. What, what is our future going to be like if we inherit this enormous debt? You know, we're not only telling our young people that they've got to borrow money to go to college and put themselves in debt for half of their life, but we're also leaving them this enormous problem which is an avoidable problem. If we would simply put a rising price on carbon, and it has to be not some gimmicky cap-and-trade with offset scheme, emissions trading scheme like they're doing in Europe, very ineffective. It's got to be an across-the-board rising fee on carbon. And the way to make that work, the public doesn't want taxes. It doesn't want uh, to see the price at the pump go up unless the money that is collected from the fossil fuel companies is given to the public. And if you do that, if you give an equal amount to all legal residents, then the person who does better than average in limiting their carbon footprint will make money. So this will work. We just have to get the public to understand that. And, and that's why I have some optimism because Citizens Climate Lobby is growing rapidly and they're informing uh, the public and legislatures and they're writing op-eds. They're trying to get people to understand that we can solve this problem and get uh, get industry, get uh, the get the um, captains of industry to be on our side and help us solve the problem. And they actually want to be part of the solution, but they tell us that you've got to make the price of fossil fuels honest by so including did, uh, their cost to society. Yeah, uh, David Roberts at Vox uh, wrote something useful uh, a week or two ago where he was saying he was worried that if this is, that to get that, what you're looking for, you need a lot of bipartisan cooperation, which is not yeah. where we're at right now. Well, you know, it's actually possible. I've talked to a lot of conservatives, and behind the scenes, they agree that that would actually make sense. It's a conservative solution to let the market help you solve the problem. Sure. So that, uh, 
that can happen, and that's why that's why Citizens Climate Lobby is signing up uh, Congress people two by two, one conservative, one Republican, one Democrat at a time, because they want this to be bipartisan, and they know that it could could work if. But you do have to explain this to the public, because the public is going to see the price of gasoline going up at the pump. But uh, if we do it in a way where the funds uh, go to the public one way or another, then uh, it would work. Right. Uh, one last thing. Could you just talk a little bit about the paper, the, the, the paper you're pulling together? Yeah, well, I'm uh, writing a paper with about a dozen uh, outstanding international scientists uh, trying to make this story clear of just how urgent it is. If we, we, if we do phase down fossil fuel emissions rapidly, which we could do if we have a price on carbon, then we also need to get some CO2 out of the atmosphere, a significant amount. We could do that with improved agricultural and forestry practices, but we've got to, uh, we've got to make that happen. And I think one way that we can do this is we plan to also file some lawsuits against the fossil fuel industry because they've been uh, misleading the public and uh, they, just like the tobacco industry in the past where we did get settlements against them, and I say that money should go to an international, to the United Nations allowing a program in which those, we need all the countries in the world to pay attention to their agricultural and forestry practices so that we can draw down CO2 and store it in the soils and in the, in the forests, in the biosphere. Uh, but we should, we could use that reward money from the fossil fuel industry and we would make it dependent on, you know, you'd have to check each year, every few sure. years and see that the countries are actually taking those actions and then uh, make their uh, financial payments uh, somewhat dependent on that. Well, it's going to take a lot of sustained work, which That's is what right. you seem to be pretty good at. Well, sustained, yeah. Uh, I keep talking about <laughs> that somehow urgency and patience have yeah. to be combined. I don't know how yeah. that works. But well, we're running out of time, so know, our patience has got to run out pretty soon, too. But okay. I, I think there's a good chance that things will move rapidly now.